but our next guest is no stranger to shattering glass ceilings. Cynthia Marshall became the first black female CEO of an NBA team in 2018. Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban hired her to transform the team's toxic work culture. Under Marshall, the Mavericks leadership team is now 50% women and 47% people of color. Forbes has named her one of the world's 15 most inspiring female leaders, and Adweek called her one of the 30 most powerful women in sports. But here's the thing. She has broken barriers all her life. Marshall was the first black president in her high school and the first black cheerleader at UC Berkeley. And in her new book, You've Been Chosen, Thriving Through the Unexpected, Marshall shares personal stories of resilience that helped shape who she is today. Sint Marshall joins us right now. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm doing fabulous. How are you all doing? doing well. Great. Thank you Better for joining now. us. Now, you were hired by Mark Cuban yes. um, to help change the culture. Now, is this true that at the time you didn't really know much <laughs> about basketball? And if that's the case, then why did he feel like you were the perfect person for the job? And okay. Nick, she didn't know who Mark Cuban was. Okay. I didn't. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm a basketball fan, but I didn't know the business of basketball. The business of and basketball. I did not know Mark Cuban. So don't judge me. I just didn't. But I know him now. Yeah. I know yeah. him now, and he knows me. Yeah. Uh, but I took it because it was an opportunity uh, to make a difference. And when Mark laid out the position and he was very sincere about changing the culture, I had done similar work at AT&T, which is how he got my name. And two women stopped me as I was leaving his office and told me their stories mm. and said, you have to do this for us. And so I, you know, I immediately said, you know, let me go home and pray about it because I pray about everything. Of course. And I came back and talked to the employees the next day and for three hours. Uh, I just heard uh, different stories, and I met these wonderful people. We have amazing people at the Dallas Mavericks. And I said yes. I said yes. I said yes for the sisterhood, but it turned out to be for everybody. And so it's been an amazing experience with all these fabulous people uh, working to make a great place to work. I, I don't take the credit for it at all. You've got the uh, three principles of leadership that you live by. Listen, learn, and love. Do mm -hmm. I have those right? Yes, my three L's of leadership. Yes. If I, to be an effective leader, I need to listen to the people and truly listen at a very deep level. Listen to really understand them. I had one-on-ones with every single Mavericks employee when I got there. Wow. And so to listen to the people, learn from the people. I mean, back in the day, I went to pole climbing school at AT&T just to learn, you know, what people actually do every day so right. I could have empathy for them and then to love them, to love them as people, not as employees, right. but to love that person who gets up out of bed in the morning. That's who I want to walk into our doors. And so we have to truly, truly love them. You no, know, when Mark was here, he was raving about you, so I really couldn't wait to meet you. But your book, The, the Chosen, is so key, I think, to your life. You had a very abusive father who used to beat the crap out of your mother. You, given vivid detail, broke your nose one time. Mm. You, you talk about uh, being diagnosed with cancer, colon cancer. You survived that. You've had four miscarriages and had a baby on the fifth time, second trimester miscarriages. Yes. Wow. That baby, little Carolyn, did not live. You've yes. now adopted uh, four children. But I also look at what you've done in the corporate world. And this is what fascinated me about the book. Early on in your career, you were told, uh, do not wear braids, take the braids out of your hair. Do not wear red shoes because they're not professional. Today you're wearing hot pink shoes. Hot yeah. pink, that's Looking right. Good. I'm Looking making good. a statement, you like these? Yeah, like okay, them. I'm making a statement. So that was early <laughs> on sent. Yes. And then later you get this big promotion. And you said that when she called the person to give you the promotion, you could tell she wasn't happy for you. But what did she tell you you needed to do in order to get the promotion? Well, she had left a magazine on my desk, so she told me that she wanted me to look like the people on the cover. And so there were these black people in all white. Uh, somebody had a short haircut, so she wanted me to cut my hair. Of course, I didn't want to do it. My husband was in the background saying, I have a barber, I have a barber, we can do this. I'm like, no, no, this is She wanted you to change your name. She wanted me to change my name, so she said I couldn't be sent because nobody knows what a scent is. I have to be Cindy or Cynthia. Cynthia. I couldn't talk that loud. I couldn't have all these people in my office. Do not laugh too loudly. Do, couldn't laugh too loud. She said I was just too happy and I needed to be a little more stoic. Stop saying the word blessed. And stop saying blessed. I need, I stop saying lucky. That I, I mean, stop saying blessed that I needed to say I was lucky. So when mm. somebody tells you all of that, <laughs> sent Marshall, when somebody tells you all of that, and you turn down the promotion, you turn down the promotion, you said thanks, but no thanks. I had to. But when you've gotten all these obstacles to overcome, what keeps you so enthusiastic and so focused and so confident about what you do? Well, I think it's a, it's a faith that I have that I got from my mother mm -hmm. uh, that no matter you know, what happens, uh, it, it's always going to come out better on the other side. 
And so, and that's the, what the book is all about, that I've been chosen for this adversity. We've all been chosen uh, for adversity, but we're uniquely qualified to yeah. deal with it. And so it just, uh, it's a faith. But and, gonna, and knowing that I, I serve a purpose. Yeah. But you were going to retire. You were supposed to retire when Mark Cuban called you. You have a four-year contract. Yes, I was retired and I started my own business, but I was called to do it. I truly well, you was know called what? to do it. We are glad yes. that you didn't retire. Sent yes. Marshall, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. You've been chosen on sale tomorrow. And on today's CBS Mornings podcast, Sint Marshall shares the role that Faith has played in her professional and personal life. Yeah. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sister. I like your green shoes. Okay. Thank you very much.